start with, um, I'm going to present uh, the first paper together with my uh, colleague Knut Bretzke from the University of Tübingen and Andrew Cannell, who is with us today, from the Rocky Project. And I promise to <coughs> say a few words about uh, the Rocky pro Project. Rocky means the role of culture in early expansions of humans. <laughs> It's a long-term project uh, funded by Heidelberg, the Academy of Sciences and Humanities. And uh, we have two uh, research centers within this project. One is situated here in Tübingen University and the other um, in the Sengenberg Forschungsinstitut in Frankfurt uh, Main. Um, and as the name of the project indicates, we're dealing with uh, human expansions uh, in Africa and Eurasia in a time frame from about 3 million to 20,000 years today. So it's a lot of time which is uh, spent by this project and uh, one of our <coughs> important tools in this project is uh, a large database inter um, um, interrelational uh, database called Road Rocky Out of Africa database. Those of you who have joined uh, session S20 today may have heard about uh, this database. Um, our first presentation uh, is entitled Diversity and Mobility, deducing Neanderthal land use patterns from the analysis of lithic assemblages. Um, I guess Dr. Kondo has already heard an earlier version uh, a few years ago in Japan. So it's about the same paper but with much more data today. So <laughs> maybe you will remember. Um, two of our primary research questions are what can lithic artifacts, usually the most frequent, if not the only find category of tell us about settlement and land use patterns of Neanderthals in the Middle Paleolithic, and um, are there differences in tool diversity and land use patterns between assemblages from a distinct cold phase and those from a distinct warm phase? Um, to address these questions, um, we started a case study uh, which presents data on lithic artifacts from Middle Paleolithic sites in Europe dating to MIS-5E and MIS-6 to test the working hypothesis that fluid <coughs> diversity and land use patterns differ, differ markedly between a distinct cold phase and a distinct warm phase. As you can see, um, Emma, oh, sorry. MIS-5E, uh, it's the Emian sensu stricto, uh, the interglacial, last interglacial, which lasted from about 130 to 150,000 uh, years BP. And um, in contrast to that, MIS-6, let's see here, uh, it's very harsh glacial, a distinct cold phase which lasted from about, yeah, let's say, 190 to 130,000 BP. So, the blue color indicates cold phases and uh, red color indicates warm phases. So, our material consists of uh, lithics from uh, 55 assemblages from 34 localities as far as MIS 5E is uh, concerned and 53 assemblages from 36 localities as far as MIS 6 is concerned. Um, the sites we regarded in our study are mapped in this map uh, where red dots uh, indicate finds from MIS 5E the blue dots indicate sites from MIS-6 and these violet dots uh, indicate sites which have both MIS-5E and MIS-6 finds. Um, don't go into details uh, as far as the distribution of these sites uh, is concerned. 
Please note that this line indicates the maximum extent of the ice sheet during um, MIS-6. Uh, it doesn't mean uh, that uh, these uh, sites indicated here have been found uh, below ice. So it's just the maximum extent. Uh, I think uh, it's easy to understand. So, to address these questions, we used several methods. Uh, one of the methods is uh, to assess tool diversity. Um, we assume that uh, tool diversity is a function of mobility, as some colleagues have uh, written uh, earlier, and that it is positively related to the length of stay, which means uh, the longer the stay, the higher the tool diversity is. Uh, to estimate this uh, tool diversity, we use the specialization index, SI, <coughs> which is calculated using Simpson's diversity uh, index, where small n uh, is the number of tools per tool group, and capital N is the total number of tools. And, uh, uh, Specialization index near zero means a low degree of specialization and in turn a greater diversity of tool types used on that side, uh, while um, the specialization index near one um, means a higher degree of specialization and in turn means that only few different tool types have been used uh, on the site analyzed. Other methods are remote control. Other method methods include uh, assessment of tool flake core ratio. Uh, this means tools, flakes and cores uh, are counted for each sample. Um, and we assume that uh, these measurements are related to the goal of lithic reduction as, again, uh, many colleagues have uh, found out uh, in earlier years. Yes. Uh, increased tool frequency <coughs> normally means shorter stays at the special site. <coughs> Sorry. Increased flake frequency means longer stays, and uh, an increased flake core ratio uh, is a sign of um, intensified lithic reduction, which again uh, is an, a sign for higher mobility. Uh, the last method we used uh, in our study is um, the assessment of artifact density. Um, we counted the total of lithics artifacts larger than two centimeter and di um, divided them by the excavated uh, area in square meter. And again, we think that uh, this value is a function of duration of stay and intensity of site use. It is positively related to, to occupational intensity and negatively related to the degree of mobility. Um, what follows from this is an increased density means longer stays and increased intensity of site use uh, or maybe reuse of uh, this site. And um, another method in the near future we will add to the results by analyzing the diversity and transfer distances of lithic raw materials. We haven't done this yet, but uh, that's really planned for the near future now. So let's have a look at some, uh, very few of our results. Um, that's a graph uh, indicating the specialization index. Again, um, red color means uh, MIS-5E, so interglacial, and blue color means uh, MIS-6, uh, glacial uh, conditions. And what we can see here um, is a graph indicating the frequency distribution of specialization index using kernel density estimates. Uh, higher peaks, as in this case, um, reflect more values occurring at this point along the abscissa. So the majority of sites, as you can see here, um, have uh, specialization indice values, uh, index values below 0 0.5. It's valid for both samples. Um, as far as MIS-6 is concerned, most sites um, have uh, 
as i values between 0.2 and 0 0.6. Um, as far as FIFE is concerned, most um, sites have SI values between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5, and as you can, sorry, same problem every time. Uh, as you can see here, um, as far as MIS 5E is concerned, there's an additional cluster of sites with SI values between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7. So this means um, for MIS 5E, uh, we have a smaller range uh, of uh, SI values and uh, can conclude from this that uh, site use seems to be more standardized, while um, there are also some SI values um, which indicate uh, some an addition of uh, sites with specialized function. This is uh, this is uh, here this uh, small peak uh, given in this, uh, in this graph. And uh, to test the reliability of these results, uh, we uh, made some statistics and uh, what we can see here um, is that the bootstrap samples show a clear shift towards smaller SI values in the MIS 5E sample regarding the overall composition of the sample and uh, what we can deduce from this is um, in general a decreased specialization in the MIS 5E sample in comparison to MIS 6 and uh, these results point to significantly more sites with evidence for longer stays during MIS 5E. So this uh, illustration shows ternary plot plots showing the composition of assemblages from MIS 5E and 6 with regard to flakes, tools and cores. Uh, all these dots indicate the location of each assemblage. The color code reflects the density pattern of the dots uh, uh, from blue, which means high density, to light gray, which means uh, low density. And uh, though there are some slight differences uh, when we, you compare these two uh, illustrations, we must say that there's no real significant, significant difference in the compositions of the assemblages between MIS-6 and uh, MIS-5E. You remember our working hypothesis was that there might be uh, significant differences between sites from a distinct cold phase and uh, a distinct warm phase. And, this doesn't seem to be reflected uh, if you use these uh, tool core and uh, flake ratios. Um, as far as uh, artifact density is uh, concerned, which is uh, calculated uh, per square meter, uh, total lithics uh, divided by excavated area in square meter, uh, it's plotted uh, against its y uh, exit, oh, sorry y-axis and uh, the special ID, specialization index is given on the x-axis and um, again the color code reflects the density pattern uh, of the dots from white which means high to green which means low and again though there are some slight differences um, if you go into detail um, Generally, there's no correlation between artifact density and uh, specialization index in both samples. So, what do we conclude from this? So, as I said, that's just um, an overview of some of uh, the results. Of course, it's much more complicated, uh, but it's not possible to show this in uh, 15 minutes. Um, so, our conclusions uh, is, uh, are Although the climatic curve indicates drastic changes between MIS 6 and 5, you have seen this uh, at the start of the presentation, uh, the land use pattern of Neanderthals seems to have changed rather moderately. Uh, for both MIS 6 and MIS 5E, multi-task sites reflecting longer stays dominate the settlement system. Additional task-specific sites reflecting shorter stays are only present 
in the NIS 5E sample. Um, just to comment on this, uh, maybe you uh, have heard about these uh, butchering sites, elephant butchering sites uh, belonging to MIS 5E. I think uh, sites like this are reflected uh, in, uh, in this. Uh, however, settlement behavior during MIS 6 seems to be less standardized than during MIS 5E, where we see evidence for a more standardized, standardized site use. So, the, of course, there are many questions left, but uh, some of them are listed here. So, uh, accepting that artifact density reflects duration of stay or intensity of use or reuse, uh, does the range of uh, SI values for sites with low occupation intensity in the MIS 6 sample indicate an opportunistic land use strategy? Consequently, does this indicate that future needs are less well anticipated? I have no answer to this. Uh, do the task-specific sites with higher artifact densities in the MIS 5E sample indicate intensive reuse of one locality? Does this consequently indicate a greater planning depth? Again, I don't have a conclusive answer to, this, uh, to that. And uh, what seems most, perhaps most interesting uh, to me is the question, Given only moderate differences, as uh, shown in the graphs, uh, uh, which are shown in the presentation, given only moderate differences in land use between climatically distinctly different periods, do we perhaps overestimate the role of changing climatic conditions for the evolution of the Neanderthals in Central Europe? Or <coughs> asked differently, uh, which role uh, does culture play, perhaps, uh, in uh, the land use patterns uh, of uh, Neanderthals mm -hmm. during MIS 5E and uh, MIS 6? So, as I told you, many questions, a uh, few are listed here, and I'm sure there are more questions uh, from your side. And uh, so, I must admit that I'm not so very familiar with the statistical analysis which uh, our colleague Knut Bretzke uh, performed, uh, but never, nevertheless I will try uh, as far as it is possible for me to answer all your questions. So thank you for your attention. Thank you.